In today's video, I'm going to tell you seven best practices in order for you to successfully rent a place while having animals. I'm Hector and this is Bruce and you're watching The Keep. Welcome back guys, thanks for coming. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell button so you don't miss out any updates. A friend of mine also had this question not so long ago. So rent a new place, but you're weary or you're nervous about how you're gonna achieve this because you have a few animals with you. I know how you feel and that's why I put this guy together. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Number one, ask first. I know this is silly, but even if the property you're viewing or the properties you are going to view are not listed as pet friendly, this is because most property owners won't allow animals that can potentially damage such properties, like a cat or a dog. Now, cat and dog owners, bear with me here. I'm gonna explain myself why. A cat and a dog need more attention and more stimulus than an animal that you could keep in a vivarium or a terrarium or etc. I mean, this guy doesn't do anything at all, ever. Actually, this is the most active that he has ever been besides of walking around his enclosure at night from time to time. I have had cats before and cats can be pretty destructive with furniture or if you have paper on the walls they're gonna rip it off for sure and I know for sure that if I don't take my dog for walks as much as he needs or if I don't play enough with him he will soon enough stress and start chewing on something he's not supposed to be chewing and he kind of does anyway but it could be worse so therefore if you keep low risk damage animals with you the property owner is more likely to be accessible for you to bring your pets. Asking is also important so you don't have any misconceptions or high hopes on a property that might not accept animals. Point number two, educate, don't intimidate. This is very important. Once you have asked about pet allowance and the property owner seems accessible about it, now your job is to make sure that she or he feels comfortable with you to bring your pets on board. Tell them a little bit about your hobby. Talk to them through your everyday with your animals, how you care for them. Make a really big difference when the property owners are making a decision whether or not rent you the property. Which takes me to the next point. Be a responsible owner slash parent. Oh man, I know some people will grieve me for this, but especially because I don't have children, but Yes, and this is not me telling you that you're a bad parent or that you're not a good one. No. And I know, I'm talking about responsibility while I'm handling or letting Bruce walk on me. But if you know your animals and you're confident about it and you, and you want to handle them, then it's pretty much up to your own risk. See here, Bruce? He just wants to take a walk. And he's not at risk and neither myself. But enough of Bruce. So kids, if you're watching, don't do what, don't do what I do. But listen to what I'm saying. Be a responsible owner slash parent. I can stretch this far enough. A lot of people will buy reptiles or tarantulas or other animals thinking just in the fun part of keeping these animals. Yes, it's very fun. It's very fun until you realize all the responsibilities that comes with this animal. And the more animals you have, the more responsibilities you will have. Having an animal in general, any animal, it's a compromise. Most of reptiles, amphibians and arachnids will stay with you for a long time if you give them a proper care. Most of female tarantulas can reach up to 20 years in captivity. Some reptiles and amphibians will be with you for 10 to 15 years if you provide the proper care. Hell, the oldest bull python ever recorded in captivity was 47 years old. That's right. So let that sink in a little bit. And I'm not making this up. You can look for it. It's on Animals Planet's page. Also, most of these animals will get to you while they're babies or hatchlings. And at, at this point, we're not thinking about how big this thing is gonna get. We're just thinking how cool 
it's my new baby monitor or uh, how cool are the colors on my on my new six month old python but then they get big and people tend to not want them anymore because they got bigger and they don't have the space or they're just they just got too expensive to maintain remember a great animal comes with great responsibility is that a ripoff especially if you're a parent and you're looking to get an animal for your children i've seen countless ads on internet for animals where the kids don't want their pet snake anymore or they are not interested anymore in their pet lizard and then you see the animals and most of the times they were kept under bad conditions there's also this bad habit of young people buying animals and then once they get bored of them they try to trade them for something else that happens a lot too and they're not trading cards man come on sorry for the rant and no offense this is parents fault so as a parent make sure that you're not getting your kid just a cool pet for the sake of the animal being cool Find any animal do your research find out if the animal you're looking to buy suits your lifestyle be sure that you can support that animal financially and most important don't bail out on your animal once it gets bigger point number four read your contract and this is something that will be different everywhere depending where you are in the world you're gonna have to abide to your local laws and comply with the property owner requirements reading your contract though it's crucial here is where and when you negotiate when you, with your new landlord for instance i live in dublin and in most places i have ever rented none but one had written in their contract not pets allowed where are you going bruce but this is deceiving and here's the thing just because it doesn't set pets not allowed doesn't mean that they are for example once i have mentioned that i have animals the property owner seems to be more careful and less accessible than before and this is because at least here in dublin there is this bad practice of renting without giving notice that an animal or animals are coming to the property in cases this will cause you a lot of trouble in the future if the owner finds out about your pets at this point the owner doesn't trust you anymore and most likely they don't want you in their property anymore but because i did a good job on proving myself that i'm a responsible owner and a responsible tenant and i was also willing to throw in a bit more money for the place or i was willing to take full responsibility for any damage that my animals could possibly have done ultimately the landlords decided to rent to me and if you know your way around tools and you are a bit of a fixer then you can sweeten the deal and tell them that you will keep the apartment or the house as good as you got it when you first rented and also trying to improve it and everybody can tighten some screws here and there or replace this old thing for this new one at the end of the day it is you who's gonna enjoy of, the, of your new place and i mean it will be worth to make your new home comfortable and make sure that it's going to be a long-term home for you and your animals point number five prepare your references slash animal records so you found the place you want to rent and negotiations with your landlord seem to be going well now is the time where if you have been practiced the previous points you will get rewarded previous landlord references is a must in order for you to rent a new place but this time as your previous landlord to write in your reference about your animal or write a separate reference for your animals hoping that you and ended up your previous tenancy in good terms this shouldn't be a problem scenario for your animals or for any animal make sure to get that reference too throw in any health records that you might have so the new landlord knows for sure that you are a responsible owner and that you care number six get every agreement on paper this is it you've made it you're about to sign in your new contract and the world looks pain but wait have you read your contract again so during negotiations it's very easy to undermine some stuff and sometimes these things won't make it to paper and this is a lot of trouble 
to be secure that your new landlord won't change its mind all of a sudden because you happen to have one too many pets or he just doesn't allow this animal that you have anymore. Having everything written secures you from not having these problems in the future. And in worst case scenario, at least it gives you time for you to, to find for a new place. Just don't forget to be polite when you ask her or him to write down everything on their new contract. We live in strange times and everybody gets offended for no apparent reason. Number seven, keep a low profile. Slash neighbors, friends or foe. Congratulations, by this point, you're moving into your new place. Awesome, horns up for you. I know that feeling all too well. You can breathe now. But hey, we haven't finished just yet. Now we gotta make sure that everything goes according to plan. And for this, you gotta keep a low profile. Your neighbors, they don't need to know about the six foot snake that you keep in your living room. Or if you live in an apartment, the lady across the hall with arachnophobia doesn't need to know about the five or 10 or 20 tarantulas that you keep in your, in your bedroom. Or the cockroaches you use as feeders. Also make sure that none of your feeders escape, especially those pesky crickets that teleport into the dark places and corners in your house. Trust me, I know about this. Since most feeders are considered a pest, if not all of them, and they are most likely to survive the cooler or hotter temperature outside your place, possibly reproducing and appearing under your neighbor's doors, then guess who are they gonna point fingers at? So know your ground and keep a low profile. Not everyone will be interested in the stockpile of bugs that you're keeping. Most people will reject this idea and could possibly be the cause of why your landlord is changing its mind about your animals. But wait, you have everything unwritten, right? So you should be safe from this, but better safe than sorry. Now for a bonus tip, choose wisely. Be mindful of space. This is last, last but not least, Beware of the animal you're keeping in your living space and how much of that space is dedicated for such animal or animals. If you live in a small apartment, maybe having a seven foot snake won't be the best, either for you and the, and the snake. Or maybe you wanna have a parrot or you have one already and oh my God, those guys are loud. I kept three of them in the past and it was always a party at home. All in all, this is self-explanatory. This point is very straightforward. In order for you to have whatever animal, you're gonna need a specific space and room conditions for them to thrive, regardless of whatever animal you're keeping or want to keep. It's not like tarantulas or insects that you can just stockpile them in one corner. <laughs> you will also need a dedicated space for all the stuff that you need for those animals. Keep in mind that it's not only the enclosure and the animal, it's also Hey, don't pinch me. Also the feeders and the cork bark or pieces of wood, the left, the leftover substrate from the, the last rehouse, possibly the smaller enclosures that you are not using anymore. And if you're like me and like many other keepers and you like to do a bit of DIY, maybe for enclosures or for backgrounds or whatever, you're gonna have tools and materials that will need space as well. And also if you have a bunch of creatures, it's most likely that you buy everything by bulk and you're definitely going to need storage space for that too. For today's video guys, I hope you find this guide helpful. If you did like and comment something, remember to subscribe, hit that bell button so you don't miss out any notifications, follow me on Instagram and Facebook and I'll see you in the next video.